nursemaid's elbow. And this is essentially defined as a condition in which a child develops radial head subluxation. Subluxation essentially means that there is a partial dislocation. And this happens when a adult, or anyone for that matter, pulls the arm of a child up as if they were pulling the child to raise them or lift them. And when this happens, the radial head essentially will slip out from uh, the annular ligament that normally holds it in place. So I'd like to show you a picture of a child that essentially has been pulled by the arm or the hand upwards as if to lift him. And as you can see here, the radial head has slipped out slightly from the ligament. Not completely, that's why it's called a subluxation, so it's essentially describing a partial dislocation. In terms of symptoms, the child will have pain, have tenderness in that area to palpation, but more importantly, a very diagnostic feature is that the child will refuse to move that arm. And this will, of course, prompt the parent or guardian to bring the child in, usually to the emergency room. And if there's a, a good history, you usually don't need to do any x-rays because the history kind of tells you that this is most likely a nursemaid's elbow. If the history is not clear, then you can do an x-ray of the elbow. And the x-ray may also help uh, rule out any other types of problems like a fracture. The treatment of nursemaid's elbow is a very uh, safe and easy procedure that you can do right there in the ER and it is done as follows. First, you start with the arm extended and with the palm up. So essentially the forearm or arm has been supinated. That's the first step. Then the next step is you flex the forearm and then you extend it back. And then after that, the next step is you hyperpronate the arm and then supinate it back. And that's it. That's the procedure. Essentially, this is two uh, techniques in one. This is the first technique and this is really the second technique and this is really the starting point for both techniques. And if you do both of these, this will bring the uh, radial head back in place. And this is essentially a safe and easy way to fix the problem right there and then. And then basically the child within a few minutes will start moving the arm again. One thing I wanted to mention uh, that you will hear a pop once the radial head is put back in place by this technique. So that will indicate to you that it has worked. And also once this child starts moving the arm again, that also indicates, of course, that this procedure or technique has worked. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. Two-year-old child stumbles, but his mother keeps him from falling by pulling up on his right hand. One hour later, the child refuses to use his right arm and cries when the mother tries to move it most likely diagnosis is. Well, this is a very short but to the point clinical vignette that describes nursemaid's elbow. And nursemaid's elbow, of course, is radial head subluxation. So that would be choice C. And finally, six-year-old boy is brought to the office by his parents who are concerned because he has been refusing to use his left arm for one day. Parents report that he has been in good health and has not suffered any recent falls or injuries to the arm that they are aware of. The father does recall one incident two days ago when he pulled upward on the boy's right arm to prevent him from tripping as they descended a flight of stairs. The boy is holding his right arm with the elbow flexed and the forearm pronated. He begins to cry when you attempt to examine the arm. The most appropriate next step is, well, for nursemaid's elbow, you really just need to do that technique that I had explained, and that involves supination of the forearm and then 
flexing the forearm at the elbow. So that would be choice D.